Hey YouTube, welcome back to the YouTube journey. Um, today, we're gonna be doing something a little different. Well, I think everything we've done so far has been a little different. <laughs> Literally everything has always been something different. But today, um, about what, five days ago, something like that already. I know, this is very behind. But about five days ago or so, um, there was a Nintendo Direct. Um, was it the September 13th, 14th, something like that. Whatever it was, um, there was a Nintendo Direct, and I decided that um, we should make a little video about, you know, what we thought about everything that was announced. And there was a lot of stuff. It was a 45-minute video, which is pretty long. That's longer than everything they did at E3, and E3 was incredible. But um, so there's a lot of stuff here. I have it all down, what they announced, and everything. Um, I'm just gonna go through all of it and just talk about my opinions on it all. Okay, there's a lot of stuff here, so I have my notes, and we'll just uh, go through it all and see what we, my opinions and Steven's opinions are and everything. I don't really follow a lot of Nintendo-type news. I've never been Nintendo's biggest fan, so I originally wanted to do this video entirely unscripted just to get my honest opinion, but then it was, like, a little bit hard to do that, so I moved to a script. But then I realized when, as I was reading through the script, it's like, a lot of my opinions are coming out a bit more harsh than I wanted them to be. So I decided again to move off script, and that's what I'm gonna be doing this time. Um, but being I'm not like Nintendo's biggest fan ever, I just wanted to, I guess, issue a trigger warning in case um, I get a little negative at times. And I don't mean to do that. I think Nintendo is a great company. I think they're doing a lot of great things in the industry. It's just that, they don't make games that are my personal uh, style, my personal taste. So most of the times I don't exactly look upon uh, their products with my, with, you know, the most positive outlook. So just wanted to throw that out there before we get started. Um, so first up is Pokemon Ultra Sun and Ultra Moon. Um, if I'm being completely honest, guys, I'm not super hype for this as I feel like I should be. Um, I don't know, I'm just like, uh, Sun and Moon really didn't do it for me. I wasn't like super excited with it. it I had really pushed myself to even finish it, but I was in a bad place at the time, so that could, could totally be it, and I might just need to replay it to like really get it and really love it. Totally possible. But, um, wasn't super excited. Nothing there really caught me. Nothing seemed too immensely different or to the point where I was like, I need that game, you know? So, for now, keep my expectations kind of low for Ultra Sun and Ultra Moon. Not saying that it'll be bad, but just I probably won't be getting it launch day. So Pokemon Ultra Sun and Ultra Moon, I can't really say a lot about because I didn't know anything about Sun and Moon to begin with, so I guess it just to me looks like more of the same thing. But the only thing I can really say is the Ash Hat Pikachu is a thing. That is all. Uh, what else? Gold and Silver are available for pre-purchase. They're on the 3DS, that's awesome. Love that they're re-releasing the old games. Never not down with that. Gold and Silver are my favorite. Gen 2 is my favorite in Pokemon. Uh, probably second to Gen... Gen 5 would probably be my second favorite. Yeah, I'd say so. Uh, what else? Oh, okay. So there's a new 2DS XL and it looks like a Pokeball. It's like red and white. That that I might need to get. It looks awesome. The new 2DS is cheap. It's like 150 so it wouldn't be too expensive. And I need a new DS because mine's broken. Here it is, actually. It's the, uh, the new 3DS. The regular size one with the face plates. These are the Smash Bros. ones. They're pretty awesome, actually. But, um, the SD card slot doesn't hold an SD card, and it's gonna be like 180 to fix it. And honestly, if I'm just gonna buy a new system, I might as well buy a new system and just wait to get this thing fixed or whatever I'm going to do or just keep it as a collectible. I haven't decided on that one yet, but story for another day. Uh, they talked about the Mario & Luigi Superstar Saga remake. I feel like nobody like really talked about this. It was like quietly announced at E3 and like people were like, oh yeah, by the way, we're remaking Superstar Saga. Like, do you realize how good Superstar Saga is? That game is amazing. Like, how is this not being talked about more? Uh, Superstar Saga plus Bowser's Minions or whatever it's called? Yeah, I don't know. It looks exciting. I will definitely be buying that. Uh, there we go. <laughs> I'll definitely be buying it, trying it out, seeing what I think of whatever they add to the game. 
it's not gonna be bad. It's Superstar Saga. Have you played Superstar Saga? That game is amazing, guys. <sighs> what else is there? This stuff. Uh, oh yeah, Koopa Troopa and uh, Goomba Amiibos. Um, I am on a journey to collect every Amiibo. I have all the Smash Bros. ones, except the Cloud Corn and Vinetta ones, because I'm broke. I'm very broke. <laughs> but um, I'm gonna have to get those, because Koopa is one of my favorite little guys. He's adorable and I love him and he's adorable. Simple as that. What else? Da, da, da. Uh, the Kirby Battle Royale game on the 3DS. That looks like a lot of fun. That looks like something I'd like to play with somebody on. I love co-op. Co-op anything is fun. And that seems super exciting. I'm ready for it. So, super exciting. It's got online and co-op and a story mode. So, you know, I'm okay with that. Kirby Battle Royale looks like a pretty lazy attempt at, like, a, a battle arena type game. Um, from what I saw in the brief clip, it doesn't look like the mechanics are incredibly solid. Like, I don't know, it just doesn't look like a game that flows very well, and it sort of just comes down to, like, mashing the same button over and over. I guess just, like, a simplistic party game is what I'm getting at. So, um, not expecting too much there. It just looks like... You know, typical stuff, you can have fun with it for like five hours, and then after that it just gets like boring. Um, a lot like Triforce Heroes, um, I played that a bit with a few of my friends, and it was okay for the first like hour or two, but then after that I just started to feel like the same thing over and over. And it's it looks a lot like what Battle Royale is going to turn out to be. Oh, uh, what else? What was next? Oh, Yoga Watch 2. Um... Personally, I've never played, I've not had no desire to play or anything with Yokai Watch at all. Um, if you guys really think it's like super good, you want me to try it out or something, I'm totally down, I'm broke, but I'll give it a shot um, when I have the ability to. I will totally give it a shot if you guys think it's worth it. Um, because, I mean, if it's worth it, then why the heck not? Because a lot of people really seem to like it, and I just haven't found the, um, the, like, really, like, you need to play it, oh my god, it's so good. Like, nobody's really come to me about it, I haven't known anyone who plays it, you know? So we'll see. So the Yokai Watch 2 section didn't really give us too much to go on. All they really said was, like, you can port your old data into the new game, and that's not really telling us too much. I mean, they told us there was an improved blaster mode, but the specifics of what is improved about it they completely left out, so I don't really know how I can say too much about this. Uh, what else? Oh my god, the new Layton game? The Lady Layton game? Oh my god, guys. Professor Layton is one of the best series on the DS. It's so good. I'm so sad it's over, but it's not over, because we have Lady Layton now. I'm super excited about that. Cannot wait to try that. And that comes out soon, in like less than a month, October 6th. That's really close. Uh, Minecraft on the 3DS. That's something I feel like should have existed for a long time, and I thought it kind of existed already. I was like, oh yeah, that that didn't exist already? Oh, well, that makes sense. <laughs> you can use the touchscreen for the inventory and the map. How awesome is that? There's a use for the second screen for Minecraft, even. That's really awesome, guys. It came out that day, so that's pretty exciting. It's only on the newer systems, but... I mean, whatever. <laughs> I, I don't know. If you really want to play Minecraft on your 3DS, I mean, I think you're okay with that. So, Minecraft on the 3DS, is, it's pretty cool. It's a nice idea. Um, it's a good console for the series. I feel like the format of the game works very well for a portable console. Um, my only wish is that um, other people jumped on the genre. Like, we saw Dragon Quest Builders try to do the same thing. Um, I haven't seen enough of that game to really give much of an opinion, but if we could see other, like, sandbox games really hit the mainstream, uh, I think it's a genre that has a lot of potential, and we're not really tapping into it just yet. Um, so I'd be very interested to see what Nintendo might do with um, Minecraft as sort of a basis, and then go on from there. Although after seeing what happened to the Smash 4 community after mods, you know, were patched out of the, uh, the Wii U, I'm not too sure how much the modding is going to be a part of the uh, Switch. So... Nintendo, please support modding. People like us would love to make mods to sell your games better. What else is there? Oh my god, the new Mario Party game. It's like they were listening to us. And then, okay, so it's... 
It's called Mario Party the Top 100, I think is the title. Um, it's the 100 best minigames from every Mario Party game all put together. And later on they announced that they're putting board games back in. Like, they're gonna make a good Mario Party game again. Guys, this is exciting. 10 was a letdown. We're back. This is gonna be amazing. I'm so excited. The Island Tour 1 of 3DS, also garbage. This is gonna be great. I'm so excited. Why did this not get more news or more, like, hype? I don't know. I'm hype about it. And it's on 3DS, so you can bring it wherever the heck you go. Or whenever you people do. I don't know. <laughs> Actually, the last time I checked, Almost every time a mini game came on in Mario Party, uh, we would collectively look at the other people we were playing with and just start shaking our heads. Because we knew we were not in for a good time. Not at all. Da -da -da. I'm so tired. <laughs> okay, um. What is all this? Oh, Atlas RPGs, so Alliance Live, looks like fun. Train Shirty Redux, uh, anything Shin Megami Tensei, I'm gonna enjoy like the heck. Everyone loves Shin Megami Tensei, even if you don't think you do, you just haven't played it yet. You gotta play Persona or something, guys. And we will talk about Persona on this channel. Oh my god, I can't wait. Okay, back to what we were talking about. Ah, oh, this is so frustrating. Every single time they put something that I feel like I could really like learn something about and really discover, they don't really give you anything to go off of. It's just like 10 seconds worth of content. And the Atlas RPGs, I feel like it's something that could have been interesting to, to hear about. I mean, I can go look it up on my own, of course, but being we're strictly talking about Nintendo Direct right here, um, it just feels like such a missed opportunity to help engage somebody like me who's not really a Nintendo fan to really, like, take an interest in the stuff that they're putting out. So, I don't know why they chose to just give these titles, of all things, like, just 10 seconds. I, it just blows my mind. Actually, you know, C5 demo came out that day, also awesome. Uh, they're putting Apollo Justice Ace Attorney on the 3DS, my favorite Ace Attorney game. That's gonna, that's a very rare opinion, most people hate that game. I love it. I think Apollo is my favorite Ace Attorney character. He's awesome. I love his game. I love every case in that game. I just love it so much. Of course, it's only like five seconds worth of video for Fire Emblem Warriors, but what kind of surprised me a bit was that I was somebody who heard about the crossover between Warriors and Dragon Quest. Uh, Dragon Quest, uh, Heroes, the World Trees, Blight, and the Blight Below or something. It's, it's a long name, what can I say? But, um, it seems like it had more solid graphics, of all things. Um, which is, which surprised me, because I would think Nintendo, who's always been a company that kind of jumped on graphics as, like, their selling point, but out saying that I don't think looks quite as visually appealing as the Dragon Quest title. Um, of course, there's not really much to say as far as mechanics go, I'm sure it's just a, a generic Warriors game, but... I'm kind of disappointed with that title, because that's something that might have been interesting to me. Um, I don't own a console to play it with, of course, but if I had known somebody who had it, I would definitely give it a shot. But just from that five seconds alone, it's kind of a little bit of a letdown, to be honest. We're getting the orange and white new 2DS XL. Super excited about that. And then they talked about Xenoblade, bleh, Xenoblade Chronicles 2 for a long time. Like, a long time. <laughs> They talked about, you know, how they, uh, how the story will go and the different factions and things like that. And then they were talking about the scenery and how the battle system worked a little. And there's, like, drivers and blades and there's, like, all these mechanics and things. And, um, what else? Comes out December 1st. That's so soon, guys. Nintendo's pumping out games like crazy. They're doing so good. And I think what I really liked about this whole thing was they were showing off this game. Obviously looks amazing. But as they were showing it off, I was realizing I'm gonna love this game just as much as I liked Xenoblade Chronicles because I love Xenoblade Chronicles. That game's like one of my favorite games of all time. But X felt really flat for me because it was like, there were like five main characters but they weren't like in your party all the time and it was just like, I don't know. But how in Xenoblade, regular Xenoblade Chronicles um, you had your main characters and they were always with you and there was just like a lot of like camaraderie and like Interactions between the characters and you like really felt to love them and you felt their love for each other and by the end of the game It was just like oh, I love this 
And the story, of course, is incredible. If you haven't played Xenoblade Chronicles, it's on the Wii U Virtual Console, it's on the new 3DS, it's on the Wii if you really want to buy it on there. Take the time and play that game. It's long. I know it's long. It's like a 60, 70 hour game, 100 if you really want to push yourself and do everything. It's so worth the time, guys. It's so worth the time. Oh my god. But this looks like it's going to be a lot like uh, regular Xenoblade Chronicles, where it was very story focused and very character focused, and the, the party members were really close with each other, and I'm very excited for that. Because that's what made Zoomblade so good, the story and the characters, you know? So, if they can pull that off again, and it looks like they might, this could be an amazing game. So in Xenoblade Chronicles 2, um, it looks like an interesting title all around. It seems to have pretty solid graphics, music. Um, the only questionable thing for me is mechanics, only because it looks a lot like what I saw in the first Xenoblade Chronicles, which is kind of... I guess I could say outdated sort of combat system, which is reminiscent of like World of Warcraft. I know I'm triggering people here. I'm sorry. I'm actually not sorry. Um, but it just seems like they took that old archaic model of like turn-based attack speed combat and just added a few more meters, gauges, collect them all type things. Um, we'll have to see how it turns out in that respect. But overall, it seems to be shaping out to be a pretty solid, immersive title. Pro definitely one of the more flagship, uh, items available on the uh, the console. What else is there? There's a special edition for that, that's awesome. And then, uh, what's next? Oh, more uh, Splatoon 2 news. Have not played it yet, don't own a Switch. Way too broke to buy one. <laughs> Will buy one when I have the money. So I'm happy to see that they're still pushing the Splatoon uh, IP a little bit because Again, while I'm not a, the biggest fan of the exact mechanics of the game, uh, the, the crosshair being one of them, um, I was really, really impressed with Nintendo taking such a bold step into a genre that they've never taken, you know, they've never really thought about developing for before. Um, and I think it was a really good success. Um, I'm, I'm just waiting to see what happens in Splatoon 2, to see what kind of updates they made, what kind of changes, improvements on the genre, because I think... Um, the FPS genre in general is very much stagnating right now. It's just con it's just dominated by a couple of um, big franchises, which kind of retain the same mechanics all throughout their series. I mean, of course, there are changes from game to game. I'm not going to say there aren't, but just to see something that's so different and so unique, um, that's the kind of creativity I w I'd like to see uh, going forward. And that's sort of what I expect from Nintendo of all companies because they've always been one that's not exactly. Um, they don't feel like they have to stick to the norm, they don't have to develop the same thing everybody else is. Um, which is one of the things that I think I expect most um, when I'm looking through these trailers and seeing all these new releases. So whenever I see titles that don't really innovate too much, it's just kind of like, what are you doing? So, um, but yeah, Splatoon 2, I think they're taking it a good direction. Uh, jury's out so far, I haven't had a chance to play with it hands-on, uh, when I have a chance to do so. I'll definitely have a much better idea of the title. What else is there? New, uh, they brought Kelp Dome back from the first game. That's a fun one. There's a new stage with like a river down the middle. There's a new weapon. Da -da. Uh, Fire Emblem Warriors. There's a new trailer. They announced Lynn. That's awesome. Can't argue with Lynn. Who can argue with Lynn? Right? <laughs> oh. They decided to do a second segment of Fire Emblem Warriors, and this one is not five seconds. This one is actually uh, a bit longer, it seems. This one is actually a minute long, so we just give this one a quick watch because I figured you only do one segment on a game, but no, this one gets two, even though the first one was only five seconds. Yeah, that's how we make videos. So I just want to talk about something Nintendo did in Xenoblade Chronicles 2 that they really didn't give enough time at all. It's literally just a second of footage, but the single moment is really what like pushed me to want to play the game. Uh, I'm going to play the footage back as I'm talking. Um, so you, as you can see, uh, Nintendo's revealing one of the characters in the game, and I'm super hyped about it. She's already become my favorite Nintendo protagonist, and I don't even know why, because I haven't gotten to see her in action in the game. Um, so I'm definitely going to keep an eye out for her, uh, because I think she's really going to steal the show. Y you see what I did there? I, I split my commentary into two parts, just like how they split the 
You get it? It's funny, right? Yeah, it's funny. Just, yeah. Thumbs up if that was funny. If, if it wasn't funny, then, um, subscribe. And I'll do better in the next video. Um, they're updating sniper clips with, like, new stuff and all these new mechanics and stuff. Um, but it's like a new game. But if you own the game, you can buy it as DLC. Kind of sucks. Wish it was just a free update. You know. But I guess, you know, beggars can't be choosers, right? What else is there? Oh, Morphe's Law. It's like this weird indie game. Um, it's like a shooter. But like, with like shrinking and growing mechanics. It's weird. I don't know. It looks interesting. Um, when I do own a Switch, I'll probably try it out. If there's a demo or maybe I'll buy it just on a whim. Who knows? I don't even know what to say about Murphy's Law. It's just the most, like, what the heck were you smoking when you made this thing? Like, how does this even make sense? I don't... Uh, what else is there? Rocket League, Nintendo-specific cars, and local wireless. That's really awesome, honestly, because... I mean, how is that not awesome? Rocket League's amazing, and now you can just play Rocket League wherever you are. That's incredible. <laughs> I guess there'll be a special trigger warning for this one. Okay, still here. So, it looks like the way you make a game, Nintendo, like, exclusive, even though it's not exclusive, but, like, you make it Nintendo's own, is by slapping a few skins in it. Like, hey, whatever sells, I guess. Arena of Valor, it just looks like League. Um, <laughs> I don't really have anything else to say about it besides the fact that it looks like League. It looked exactly like the Summoner's Rift. It was literally League. <laughs> um, but hey, if they put League ripoff on the Switch, I don't really care. That sounds cool. I mean, I don't play League, but, you know, cool, I guess. <laughs> So as somebody who's actually pretty active in the League scene, I was kind of interested to see um, Nintendo, of all companies, jumping on the MOBA bandwagon. Um, it's really too soon to see what this game has to offer, because every MOBA on the surface looks roughly the same. So we'll just have, I'll just have to keep an eye on this as it progresses, as it develops, and see what it has to offer. I mean, I'm kind of excited to see what... I mean, it's not Nintendo putting it out, but like, what a... Nintendo-esque view of the genre is, because from what I can tell, Arena of Valor is uh, Switch exclusive. I mean, it was also on Android and iOS, but those aren't real um, consoles, so... Did I mention I had a trigger warning on this video? Uh, specifically when I'm speaking? Yeah, that's why. Just throwing it out there. Um, then they talked about the Skyrim port to the Switch. I've seen enough of this game. <laughs> I've played Skyrim, I've... Like, how much Skyrim can we possibly take, guys? Come on. Yeah, Skyrim, I've kind of seen enough of Skyrim for now. Um, I tried the game for a bit. I mean, if you're really, like, into role-playing games that are really deep and, you know, story-driven and have a lot of lore, Skyrim is pretty good. I'm, I mean, the mechanics and, like, the battle system, if you're in it for that, definitely give Skyrim a miss. I mean, I don't know. It wasn't, you know... I don't really understand the hype behind Skyrim, because it's just, like I said, it's mostly reading. If you're into a, b a book that you just, you know, do a couple fetch quests, get some story, do another fetch quest, get some story, kill some things in a dungeon, get some more story, like, that, if that's your kind of game, then go for Skyrim. Otherwise, I don't know, it didn't really strike me as anything too amazing. And don't start, get, don't get started on the graphics, because, like, I've seen before and afters of people who, like, have the game unmodded and then modded. If you're relying on mods to make your game, you know, good, I don't really see that as the game's merit as much as it is the fact that the community is good. So I think the real shoutouts are to the modders. They're the true heroes. But just think about how much money uh, Bethesda might have missed out on if you didn't have people making these mods, since I actually know a few people who only got into the game because they heard about these great mods. So, shoutouts to modders everywhere. I'm definitely not saying this because I was a modder myself. Definitely not saying that. Uh, and then they announced Doom on the Switch. It's coming out this holiday. That's amazing. 
And Wolfenstein 2 is gonna be launched on the Switch. What? Bethesda, thanks for supporting us so much. Thank you. <laughs> wait, 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 wait a second. Doom and Wolfenstein are on the Switch? What? Now, correct me if I'm wrong, but Nintendo has always been a company that's always tried to be, you know, kid-friendly, politically correct, not rustle too many jimmies, but you have games like Wolfenstein that are literally about killing Nazis on the Switch? A Nintendo console? I don't... Maybe a lot of what I've been saying about Nintendo as a company is really not right. Huh. Uh, then the Flip Wars game got a new stage or something. People were really mad at that game. I guess it wasn't super great. It's like a Nintendo, like, quick eShop release, and people were very angry at it because it was, like, super bare minimum. I don't know. I mean, it looks pretty bare minimum, and the graphics don't look too impressive or anything. Doesn't look too impressive. Doesn't look like something I'd sink more than an hour of total playtime into, which sucks, but, you know, who knows. Yeah, it's local wireless play. I feel like that should have been there already. Arcade archives, so they put, like, the arcade versions of the games on. I'm just excited for the Punch-Out one, because there's fighters in that that I think aren't in any of the other games, which is pretty cool. Not gonna argue with that. And the Mario Bros. one comes out the late September, so that's cool. Arcade archives Mario Brothers. Okay, we're just reporting some more old games. Moving on! Da -da -da, sports games on the Switch. Yeah. They talk about sports games. It's like NBA and WWE and FIFA. Hooray! Not a sports game person at all. <laughs> Not a sports person at all, if you couldn't tell. I think it could do well in the portable market, to be honest. I feel like sports games are always something that kind of were like begging to be portable because most of the times when I see them being played, it's like, well, I'm going to college now, so usually I see people like just getting a bunch of people together in a, in a room and just playing this sort of game. So if it's a bit more like pick up and go sort of thing rather than like, who has an Xbox on the floor? Do we have to go to the eighth floor instead of staying on the third floor? I think it would be a lot better for that sort of community. I notice it more than, I notice it more with sports games than any other, you know, type of game that it seems to be very much like a party thing to do. So, props to Nintendo for really, you know, taking advantage of that. Um, Octopath Traveler, they talk a lot about it and they call the art style HD2D. Which is a pretty good name for it, because if you look at that, you're like, Oh my god, I want this, I want it right now. Uh, as someone who loves, 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 loves classic, you know, SNES and, uh, you know, PS1 RPGs, HD2D is the greatest thing ever. <laughs> it's like CG and pixels together. It's so cool. Oh, I love it. And it's by the people who did Bravely Default. Bravely Default is amazing. Bravely Second is amazing. This looks Freaking amazing. <laughs> Cannot wait. All these different characters, they'll have different abilities. It's like a seductress type of girl, and you can like seduce pretty much everybody in the game. What? <laughs> There's a guy who just, you have the option to fight anyone and everybody in the entire game. Okay, yay. <laughs> what else is there? It's like all this. They talked about the battle system in the game a little bit, and they're doing a demo, and it's coming out. It came out that day, and they want online feedback, which is awesome. Because I really think that's awesome The Square is like, here, give us your feedback for this game, and we'll totally take it into account. That's sick, <laughs> you know? Not too many companies do that. Project Octopath, um, aside from an interesting uh, name, it literally just like looks like 3D pixel art with Snapchat filters. Like, I'm, <laughs> I'm sorry, but it legitimately looks like you just took an old game and put like Snapchat filters over it. Oh. I'm dying. Uh, update for arms, they added the new character and stuff, I think. I think, right? Did it add little pop? I don't know. I really don't. <laughs> Still can't play arms, don't have a switch. Uh, so remapping controls and stuff like that, and it came out right after the direct. So the one thing that I noticed about arms is that the new update allows you to change the key bindings on your commands. I kind of thought that was something that you were supposed to do if you had a fighting game. I don't know, just saying, maybe should have been in the game from the start. Eh. 
We're getting Dragon Quest Builders on the Switch. That's cool. I heard it was fun. If you like Dragon Quest and Minecraft, you'll probably really like it because it's both of those things put together. Oh, hey, there's Dragon Quest Builders. It's a charming little game. One that I wish I had the opportunity to play, but, you know, whatever. It's it's really cool. I like it. It. I'm not going to lie. I liked Minecraft when it came out, and I still sort of do. I don't know. It's just a cool idea. And you mix Dragon Quest into it, and it's just cool. I don't know. What do you want me to say? It's cool. It's a cool game. Um, what else is there? The Kirby Switch game. You can share elements to put together stuff. It's like Kirby 64, guys. If you don't like Kirby 64, where you can put two copy abilities together and make one really cool power, what's wrong with you? Go back and play it, and you'll realize that you did like it and you were just remembering wrong or something. <laughs> So that's awesome. And you four player co op. Yes, please. It's called Kirby Star Allies. It's coming out in spring. Looks like a lot of fun. Kirby games are great. This is another case of where I think the game is really cool in concept. It's just not my personal style. So I don't know I can really talk too much about it and really like do it justice. It's like, it's a really cool idea. And I like the idea. I, I just like the fact that they decided to go the co op route and they decided to, you know, mix it up a bit and really make it feel like you're actually. You know, in a co-op game, rather than just, you know, playing two single-player games, which is what some games like to do. I don't know, it's just, Kirby games have always been kind of straightforward in their mechanics, and perhaps a little bit too limiting, I think. It just, when you have one ability, it feels like you press the button and you're locked into it for a very long time, so... I don't know. No, again, not my personal style, but I think it's, you know... it's It looks like it's a pretty solid game if you're a fan of Kirby series. I don't know. What else? And then, uh, let's see. What else do we got? We talked about some stuff quickly at the end. Lost Sphere. It's like Chrono Trigger meets I Am Setsuna, and I mean, you guys know I have a, like a literal addiction to Chrono Trigger, so you're saying anything Chrono Trigger and I'm gonna have an issue. I love that game so much. So much. And then they talked about Sonic Forces. Also looks like it's going to be great. Resident Evil Revelations, Revelations 1 and 2 is coming out on the Switch. Super cool. I think it's a pack. Hell Noir is coming out on the Switch. That's going to be a physical buy. Day one buy for me. That game is amazing. And having it on the Switch. Yes, please. And thank you. And then, of course, to finish off the whole direct, they talked about Mario Odyssey. <laughs> and let me just say that I've been wanting a Switch since it came out, of course, but I had a Wii U so I could play Breath of the Wild. Okay, so despite the fact that I put a trigger warning on this video, I've still been holding back a lot. I don't really want to say what I really think about some of the stuff that's going on here. So I'm just going to skip right over this section that talks about Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild because you really do not want to hear me talk about Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild for any amount of time. Believe me, you don't! Um, so I was just waiting for a game that I was going to say, that's going to be the reason I need a Switch. Like, that's going to be the reason that I buy a Nintendo Switch. And the first trailer for Odyssey was pretty cool, and I was like, wow, that looks awesome, and it's, you know, it's sandbox, like, Sunshine and 64, so it'll be great, it'll be amazing, you know. But um, I wasn't super like, I need a Nintendo Switch. I cannot live without this system. And then the E3 trailer for um, Odyssey dropped. And let me just say that I cry every time I watch that trailer. I could watch it right now and cry. We could do a reaction video and I would tear up. Every time I listen to just the song from that trailer, I cry. There is something magical about that game. And it is the reason that I need a Nintendo Switch. And that game comes out in a little over a month now. I'm gonna need a Nintendo Switch to play that game. There are sometimes... <sighs> there's sometimes when, like, a game is announced or shown off or a trailer is shown or something, and I watch it and I'm like, okay, you know, um, that looks like an awesome game. But I could probably be okay and fine if I just watched a Let's Play of it. There's not too many I can think of that are like that. Um, 
but there's just some times when, you know, I'm like, I'm probably not gonna buy that. Maybe I'll just see a let's, somebody will let's play it eventually, because I'm not gonna be able to afford it, and I really have that much of an interest in playing it. But there's some games when I see the trailer, where the game is announced, and I just go, well, I need to play that. I can't just watch a let's play of it. It will not be enough. I need to play it myself. Um, in recent memory, Persona 5 was that for me. Love Shin Megami. Anything Shin Megami Tensei is amazing. Persona 5 did that for me when it was announced. I was like, well, I need to buy that day one. Didn't buy it day one, but eventually got it and fell in love. Um, what else is like that for me? It's a few games. <laughs> That's the only one. That's the first one that comes to mind in, in recent memory. But when I saw the Odyssey trailer, and then we saw more footage of Odyssey in the direct, I said, well, <laughs> I need a Switch because I need to play that game. That game doesn't just look like a game, it looks like an experience. And I'm so excited to be able to just play it and fall in love with Mario again. Cause it's been a while since I've really fully like loved a Mario game. 3D World was the last one I played and I loved 3D World, it was great. Um, but I think the last time I really loved a Mario game was like Galaxy and Galaxy 2. It was just like, I remember like looking and watching and playing in awe. And I want that feeling again. And this game, just the trailers put me in that feeling. I can't imagine playing it. So I'm really excited. I think this direct was actually really great. A lot of cool stuff announced. Oh, and they're releasing it. I completely forgot they're releasing like a special edition of the Switch for Mario Odyssey. It's all red, has a cool case. Those things are going to sell out day one, we all know that. You know how Nintendo does with their things and making things and announcing stuff. They're not very good at keeping up with it. <laughs> but, um... And finally, we have Super Mario Odyssey. I'm going to go off on a limb here and say that you probably predicted this, but I'm going full broken record mode right here, and I'm just going to say another case of I think this game is pretty good, but just not my style. If you're into the whole exploration thing, mess around, take selfies, apply Instagram filters, like, what the heck is up with the Instagram filters in this list? I don't know. Yeah, there are a lot of interesting mechanics that are introduced in the game, but it just, it, it sits underneath this, you know, overarching theme of being a Mario game, and it just doesn't look particularly engaging. Like, after the first three hours or so, it's just gonna start to drag on. Because it's not really much of a story or anything to really keep your interest, unless, you know, you like messing around. The one thing that I do like that they brought back in the game is back on the Nintendo GameCube, it was actually a game called Geist. It was not very well known, of course, but um, the premise of the game was that you had to advance by not moving around as yourself, but rather as a spirit that could possess objects, animals, people, and you had to move along that way. And I thought it was really interesting in concept, and no other game really tapped into that, until I saw Odyssey did the same thing by allowing you to take control of objects and stuff, and I think that was pretty cool. I don't know if it was an exact throwback to Geist or anything, but nonetheless, still a cool idea. So yeah, I mean, they, they definitely put a lot of effort into the game, and it's a solid product overall. Not my style. I feel like I'm saying that over and over again. I don't know what else to really say. Because it's just another Mario exploration game with platforming and just simple puzzle stuff and Mario. So, that was my thoughts. And it'll be our thoughts on, um, the whole presentation and everything they announced and everything and I'm uh I'm looking forward to whatever you guys were thought of the whole direct now that it's been a little while since we all talked about what you guys thought of everything and you know uh just let me know and we can all talk about it in the comments have a good old time talking about what we thought about all the stuff that was talked about in the direct because it was a pretty meaty direct I have to say 45 minutes is a lot of time so uh thank you so 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 much guys watching it means the world to me and uh we're on our road to 50 subscribers <laughs> we're really getting there soon i can't wait well thank you guys for watching this has been star nari but you can call me chris signing off